There we are right at the at the center of my my qu next question is uh, I mean the the publication on the leaky gut and gut permeability. I yep. mean with colostrum. There you have two tricky things. I mean it's the one is the gut which is not easy to investigate and then you have the other thing the colostrum. How how came this into being this idea and this whole setup of the study? The the study, the leaky gut study actually mm -hmm. was I wasn't the real sort of um conceiver of that particular study. That was um, my collaborators based in London, um, Professor Ray Playford mm -hmm. and Tanya Marchbank, who are the um, first and corresponding authors on, on that particular paper. Um, and this that, that that's their real interest. So um, Professor Playford's group, for example, are, are world leaders in, in sort of research gastroenterology. So mm -hmm. they've got the real interest in the gut. Mm -hmm. um, and they were particularly interested in understanding the effects of various stresses on the gut and, and gut permeability. And they were particularly interested in looking at physical stress and using exercise as a model of physical stress. And that's how, that's how um, we, we sort of came to collaborate in that they mm -hmm. um, came to us or of via a mutual contact, we actually started talking. Um, and they sort of approached us as, or me, sort of as um, having expertise in exercise physiology and exercise science mm -hmm. to actually help administer that study with regards to actually the exercise side of it. So coming from an, a sports mm -hmm. science approach to actually standardize the exercise stress and mm -hmm. uh, conduct the human trial and things like that. So that's what got me interested in that. Could you uh, summarize a little bit the role of the gut permeability for the athlete? Okay then, so the, the, the role of gut permeability in athletes' um, performance and potentially immune function. Yeah. Um, there, were, there were a couple of theories. Um, the, the first one, obviously, is if the gut permeability increases, so if we kind of, you know, see that typical um, increase in gut permeability or the, the leaky gut, if mm -hmm. you like, um, then it obviously allows uh, the translocation of, of bacterial toxins um, into the systemic system or into the systemic circulation. So they, we, we know that if you get an increase in endotoxemia, and this has been reported um, a few times in the literature, that with strenuous exercise, you can detect a notable increase in endotoxin levels in, in the blood. Um, that can have a number of negative effects. Um, it has been linked to direct effects on fatigue, um, both physical fatigue and also what we call either central or mental fatigue. Um, okay. So it could have direct effects on the brain, which just affect the perceptions of effort or maybe induce sickness behaviours. Um, there is some tentative evidence as well that above a certain level, an increase in um, plasma endotoxin or in, in systemic endotoxin or endotoxemia um, can actually initiate a cascade um, of inflammatory processes, okay. which can then have sort of knock-on effects and exacerbate some of those um, fatigue and mm -hmm. things that I've just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, with regards to illness and immune function in athletes, I think another thing that could happen when gut permeability is increased is that either bacterial toxins or other foreign substances are able to enter the bodily systems or enter the systemic circulation and that then presents a challenge that has to be dealt with by the immune system. Mm -hmm. So the immune system is having to do extra work um, besides the normal role that it has to play to actually defend the body. So putting this extra stress on the immune system combined with the extra stress that it faces as a result of physical exertion and exercise, um, and we're talking about you know real endurance exercises here, um, I think can also contribute to maybe some of the negative um, effects on the immune system in the recovery period after very prolonged and or mm -hmm. strenuous exercise. And the toxin is very sensitive to measure, correct? Yes, it's it's also very difficult <laughs> to yeah, measure. Very difficult, yeah. um, 
So it's it, that is something that we will be trying to incorporate in future studies. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't have any studies so far we've successfully measured endotoxin at the same time as the other measures um, that I've mentioned or that I've done in my research. Which which immune parameters uh, do you think are the best to, to, to measure? To see the, the immune deviation or I'm not talking about... Do you think those um, uh, shifts in, in cell counts, you know, that are measured and mentioned in so many papers, that they are due to these kind of uh, um, disturbances or issues? Yeah, um, the, the, it depends on the type of exercise, mm-hmm. but the, the shifts in cell counts are, are both directly and indirectly. Um, a result of, of exercise. Um, personally, I don't think that simply looking at the cell count gives us enough information. Um, it's much better to get some indication of how well the cells are actually functioning or the functional capacity of those cells. Um, but the cell counts, they, they are part of the normal stress response and up to a certain point, they're almost certainly beneficial. Um, but yeah, they're, they're caused by various mechanisms as a result of exercise. Um, but on their own, I don't think the cell counts give us enough information. Yeah. So, um, are you looking on uh, cytokines and things like this as well? Or is it in, also in para- my research? I tend to focus on innate immunity and oh, specifically okay. on neutrophil function. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I'm really interested in how well the neutrophils are able to respond to stimulation or challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, in other studies, they have have investigated um, cytokine production, unstimulated and inst- and stimulated um, in, in various situations, and also looking at sort of um, humoral immunity and looking at you know salivary markers. Yeah. Um, Immunoglobulin A, for example, mm-hmm. in saliva um, is quite a common one. The, there are also other, other sort of branches of research where people are more concerned with the overall outcome. So rather than looking at different individual parts of the immune system mm-hmm. um, or different components or different cells within the immune system, um, they accept that the immune system is is massive, um, very very complex, and also has a certain amount of redundancy. Mm-hmm. So just because you see an increase or a decrease in one particular aspect or one particular part of immunity doesn't necessarily mean that that has a negative or a beneficial effect on the the ability of the immune system to respond. So some of the more interesting and holistic research has looked at things like the ability to respond to vaccination mm-hmm. or the the simple incidence of of infection you know mm-hmm. as as the clinically relevant mm-hmm. outcome measure mm-hmm. rather than looking at all of the bits and pieces that yeah. that contribute to that um, and I, I'm sure you're aware that there are lots of studies on things like upper respiratory illness symptoms yeah. um, but of course those studies, have a slight weakness in that we we usually don't have a confirmation mm. that a reported symptom by an athlete mm. really is due to an infective cause. Um, there are lots of other potential causes that could result in an athlete rating with a self-report questionnaire that they have an upper respiratory symptom. Mm. Um, however, I think I think we we need a, a, a combination of, of all of these different things. It, it's really useful to know a clinically relevant outcome um, you know do athletes get sick more often and if we can confirm those self-reports with actual clinical examination or clinical mm-hmm. confirmation then that that makes the studies very very strong but once we have the answer to those global questions mm-hmm. um, I think it's important to look at all of the different components to be able to understand the mechanisms as to why we have that end point. Does it mean you see the immune system also not only as a defense system but as a regulatory system? 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah.